Welcome to Israel and the picturesque city of Tel Aviv. It's this idyllic location which plays host to the first event of the 2020 World Judo Tour. As this sport-loving nation once again hosts a Grand Prix after the success of last year's inaugural event. And just as it was a year ago, the Shlomo Arena was packed full of judo fans, all in anticipation of some top-level action. During a fabulous opening ceremony, event sponsor and co-host Mr. Sylvan Adams welcomed them ahead of some spectacular judo. We'll feature two young female judoka who made an impact here in Tel Aviv. We'll bring you all the best action from the event. And we'll follow the exploits of two of the home nation's heavyweights, on whose shoulders hopes for home gold hung heavy. We started under 78 kilograms, where Natalie Powell of Great Britain was in fantastic form, with some big Ippon wins seeing her to the final, as the Welsh judoka looked to be rediscovering the judo which made her a world bronze medalist in 2017. Standing between Powell and the gold medal was Austrian judoka Bernadette Graf. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Natalie Powell now has the grip that she wants. She's dominating the head. And now she's going to look for the Makikomi. She's been on form all day. Now then, what's going to happen? Is that a Wazari? That was very close to an Ippon, but Wazari given. Powell had the head down. She had to attack. Harai Makikomi, and she rolls onto her back there, Graf, and gets away with a Wazari. Brilliant score, though, from Powell, who's been on blistering form all day. She really has. So now the same grip, Graf and Powell, both left-handers. Anything can happen from this position. Either one of them could score now. She has the grip round the belt. And she scored with Ouchi. There it is, Ouchi Gary. And she finishes it off this time. Brilliant stuff by Natalie Powell of Great Britain. And look at that change of direction. Sasai first, gets her to step forwards. She has good control around the waist. And look at the Ochi Gary there. She drives off the back leg. And that was absolutely brilliant. Natalie Powell has started the first Grand Prix of the year in style. Ochi Gary to score Ippon. And look at that smile on her face. It says it all. Looking to make history at under 63 kilograms was Katerina Haker, who became the first Australian to contest a World Judo Tour final after a stunning victory against Germany's Martina Tridos at the semi-final stage. Could she claim gold against Canada's Katerin Boschemin Pinard in the final? Katerina Haker going forwards all the time here. Boschemin Pinard is in trouble here. She'll have to get out of that one because uh, she's got her waist being controlled. Now, Haker! And she takes it down for a Wazari directly into the hold down. And that was brilliant stuff from Haker. She's been on great form and really blistering her way through. And this will be the first gold medal in history for Australia at a Grand Prix or Grand Slam tournament. Any tournament on the world tour and that was absolute brilliant she was in trouble straight away here Boshin Pinard she knew that she had to get out of there but the Osoda Gary there took the Australian into a hold down she drove her down and then she controlled the top half of the body and she just needed to hold her for 10 seconds she had a Wazari on the board 10 seconds made it was Ali and was Zeti upon, and she is the champion. And Haker has made history for Australia. At under 57 kilograms, the impressive Slovenian youngster Kaya Kaiser took a major scalp at the semi final stage with a victory over Portuguese veteran Telma Monteiro to set up her third World Judo Tour final at just 19 years of age. The experienced Helen Resovo of France would face her there after producing some fantastic judo during her eliminations, including an Ippon win against the formidable Nora Jakova of Kosovo. But it would be third time lucky for Kaiser in Tel Aviv, 
after she struck in golden score with this Ouchigari for a Wazari, which marked her arrival at senior level. As such an exciting prospect for the future, we decided that Kaiser would make a perfect choice for our latest Meet Your Judoka feature. I started judo when I was eight years old because my brother uh, trained it. Uh, my favorite throw is Uchimata, but I'm not so good at it. My favorite technique in Nevaza is Sankaku Vetame because I have strong legs. My heroes are my dad and mom because they give everything to support me. I don't have one favorite movie, but I like to watch comedy, actions, or something like that. I like all kinds of music, especially pop and Balkan. <laughs> My favorite food is dark chocolate. Um, I can play the piano and I'm really good at drawing portraits. My good friends call me Kaiserza and that's funny because uh, Kaiserza is also name of bread. My favorite other judoka to watch is Clarice Agbengnenu because she's so strong and Daria Bilodit because we are same age and she's so good. I don't have any rivals because I'm focused on myself and I don't think of other judokas. I listen to music that makes me happy. When I finish judo, I would like to be a physiotherapist. Um, everything is possible if you really believe. Judo is more than just a sport. You can learn um, not to give up. You can meet new friends, a new culture. At under 81 kilograms, Russia's Aslan Lapinagov was the man to beat as he blazed his way to the final in style. Amongst his victims were Brazil's Eduardo Yudi Santos, whom he dispatched with this huge Uranagi. Before Turkish judoka Vedat Albayrak also fell to the Russian, who this time showed off his Uchimata to book a place in the gold medal contest. His opponent there was Alexios Nstanatidis of Greece, who also boasted an effective Uchimata during the day against Japan's Mariyama Goki. Which one of these big throwers would emerge victorious in the final? It would be decided in golden score. What a match this is! Both of them going for it! 30 seconds into golden score, it could be anybody's this. Any score on the board will win it! Look at that, Uchimata! Oh, it's all over! Lapinagov! Scores with a cracking Uchimata. That was absolutely brilliant. He looked threatening all the way through the contest, but then Tenacidis also did. It was an open match. And look at that. 30 seconds into Golden Score. Sets it up with the Ashiwaza. And then the Uchimata goes in. He has to hop the uh, support leg in, central. But in the end, Tenacidis goes flat on his back. What a nip on and a gold medal for Lepinigov. The support leg went central. He had control of the bat, but look at the sleeve there. And look at the pull on the sleeve all the way through. He had it under control and he finishes it in style. A great result for Lepinigov and a great result for Russia. The first of a brace of lightweight female golds for Japan went to Tsunoda Natsumi, who armlocked Shireen Boukli of France for an Ippon win in the final, her first gold medal on the World Judo Tour since moving down from under 52 kilograms. And her compatriot Maeda Chishima also won on the ground, pinning Park Da Sol of South Korea to take the under 52 kilogram title. 
At over 78 kilograms, Romain Dicko of France took gold in style with a big Ippon win against World Masters champion Tessie Savilkoules of the Netherlands. Great stuff from the promising 20-year-old Dicko. South Korea's Kim Won Jin was looking good at under 60 kilograms as he made it through to the final. His opponent there was the equally impressive Mirak Akus of Turkey. But after using his tactical nous, Kim nullified Akus to win the match on penalty points and top a World Judo Tour podium for the seventh time. It started something for South Korea, whose 2015 world champion An Bao took under 66 kilogram gold, disappointing home favorite Tal Flicker at the semi-final stage. Kazakhstan's Yerlan Sarikshinov was his opponent there, and he had also upset the home crowd, defeating another hero, Baruk Shmailov, in their semi-final contest. A maiden World Judo Tour gold would elude Sarikshinov, however, as Anne proved why he has such an impressive record, with two Wazari scores giving him the victory. It marked his first gold medal on the tour in nearly two years. Could Anne be coming back into form just in time for the Olympic Games this year? Flicker gained some consolation from winning one of the bronze medals, giving the crowd a home medal to cheer with a victory against Yeldos Zumakhanov of Kazakhstan. The speed of under 66 kilogram Olympic champion Fabio Basile was on display in the under 73 kilogram division, as the Italian delighted the Shlomo Arena with a thrilling run to the final. Though back to his dynamic best, Basile's opponent in the final was also a force to be reckoned with. Armenia's Ferdinand Karapetian producing judo just as easy on the eye during his run to the final. But the mouth-watering showdown between these two would not come to pass, as Karapetian was unable to contest the final, leaving Basile as the new darling of Tel Aviv and showing, once again, how he is always full of surprises. Yet another of South Korea's top judoka was on form at under 90 kilograms, as 2015 world champion Gwak Dong-han made it through to the final where his bout with Turkey's Mikhail Ozilev would be decided inside Golden Score. One more penalty and Ozilev will lose this. He knows that. He's got to go forwards all the time. Getting closer with that whack. And now, oh, now he scores. What a seeing Aggie that was. He was getting closer and closer. He threatened a few times. And that is the third gold medal for Korea. They came here for a reason. They came here to qualify some of their fighters. They've used it as preparation for the Olympic Games. And look, it was Sony Surakomigoshi off the sleeve. He readjusted, didn't he, the first attack. Second one went right the way between the legs and he gets the drive. Brilliant stuff by Gwak Dong Han. And he is coming back onto form at just the right time. All our top Tel Aviv Ippons come from bronze medal matches. First up, Neil Stump of Switzerland battled it out with Salvador Casas Roca at under 73 kilograms. Stump has the sleeve. Now he needs to go in. He's got an unusual grip. Uchimata! Beautiful Uchimata. And look at that. How pleased he is with that. Gets the bronze medal. He had the outside grip, had to go in immediately. He hops the support leg central and over the top he goes. Cassis didn't stand a chance. Brilliant Uchimata. Second bronze medal for Stump in a Grand Prix. Ippon number two came when Brazil's Eduardo Udi Santos and Germany's Dominic Ressel clashed for under 81 kilogram bronze. Brazilians have been brilliant all day. Santos throwing all day as well. And they do stand up judo. Oh, look at that! Oh, Uchimata! And that was just brilliant. It really was. He has a little hop in first. Just look at the support leg. The support leg goes absolutely central on the second step. Up and over he goes, Wrestle, and you don't see him going over like that very often. 
There's the first leg in there for the Uchi Mata, but it's the readjustment of the support leg that makes the difference. The outside grip meant he had to attack. There's the Uchi Mata, there's the readjustment, and wrestle. Well, he knows it's gone, doesn't he? The crowd absolutely appreciate good judo, and the Brazilians today have been really delivering. Another Brazilian, Rafael Macedo, featured in our top hip on, as he faced Sweden's Marcus Nyman at under 90 kilograms. It was a real cracker. Nyman, two Shidos down. He'll be trying to get him to ground. He's won most of his contests on the ground, Nyman. Oh, oh not now though. Oh my goodness me. What a Sienagi that was. That was Naganakata. He had control all the way through there. Brilliant Sienagi movement, and then he just springs up, but he keeps control all the way through. Absolute brilliance, but Nyman just didn't stand the chance. How nice it is to see such classical judo. The under 70 kilogram division was taken by world and Olympic bronze medalist Sally Conway of Great Britain, who faced Kim Sung Yun in the final. Some opportune footwork saw Conway winning by Ippon to start the year in the best possible way on top of a World Judo Tour podium, as she took in the appreciation of the knowledgeable Tel Aviv crowd. IGF competition manager Dr. Lisa Allen was on hand to award Conway with her gold medal. Joining her on the podium was a 17-year-old Spaniard who had heads turning with a bronze medal winning performance in her first World Judo Tour event. Cadet World Champion Aysunoda Rouston is a judo baby her parents, both top-level coaches. And with big things expected of her in the future, we talked to her about the transition to senior level. It was my first Grand Prix. I wanted the gold medal, of course, but uh, um, bronze medal is great, so I'm very happy. Today I fought some very strong opponents, and it wasn't to prove anything to anybody, but uh, to... It was, for me, important. Of course, I could lose tomorrow, but beating them made me realize that I have arrived at this level and that I belong here. What I think is that I have to break the barriers that are in front of me. Everything is done better. Kumikata is done better, they are sharper, the techniques are better, the reaction is faster. They have to make more weapons to attack from different angles, like not just in front, that is what I usually do, but uh, attack from here, from here, from up, from down. So what I'm doing in Randori, I must try to uh, reach as close as possible to do it in matches. My dad is going to watch the videos, of course. I think he's going to say, like, let's continue working on what we're doing. There's a lot of work to do, but I think I'm on the right on the right uh, way so normally I look at my mom like and like my mom is like okay <laughs> then I, I'm happy you know I, okay let's continue this way but when like she's not moving her head like <laughs> I like no, okay I have to change something like let's try what she says because what I'm doing it's not good <laughs> something like I think it's very good because like they know me what I'm thinking because it's like you're doing that because at home you're doing that, you know? So, so there are some mistakes that you, that you can uh, correct, on, not just on the mat, but uh, also on the daily lives. And uh, I, I like it. I like to, to arrive at the Olympics, right? But not just participate, but with the opportunity to win. I want to win gold, so let's win. <laughs> win, win, win. I want to win. We finish with the male heavyweights, first at under 100 kilograms, where Peter Palchik was one of two Israeli judoka who had high hopes of taking gold on home soil. This Ippon win against Sienich Miklos of Hungary was the highlight of his day, as he made it through to the final, where he faced Brazil's Leandro Goncalves. Could Palchik send the Shlomo Arena into raptures with a win?
The crowd absolutely behind Palchik here. One of the best crowds that I've ever seen at a judo event. Now then! Oh yes, he gets the Wazari and everybody is on their feet. It was magnificent there, full commitment there by uh, the Brazilian. But he gets counted over. It's a rolling throw, so he only gets a Wazari for it. I know some of the crowd was shouting for the Ipan, but now look at this, second sticking away. And he's done enough there, and Palkin is the gold medalist. And he says, what do you think about that? They're all on their feet here, and the crowd have gone ballistic. They're all standing on their feet. He's got family, he's got supporters, and, well, he's got admirers as well. Because all the youngsters will be looking at him and wanting to do exactly what he's just done. It's absolutely fantastic. Oren Smadja doing such a magnificent job with this men's team. He's got a squad full of heroes. On hand to celebrate gold with Palchik and award him with his medal was the main sponsor and co-host of this magnificent event, Mr. Sylvan Adams. But the tension would not end there, for at over 100 kilograms, another world-class judoka, or Sasong, would face South Korea's Kim Sung Min in the final. Kim had been on incredible form during the day, throwing with some exquisite and powerful techniques. Would he disappoint the home crowd, or would Sasson provide a fitting end to the festivities here in Tel Aviv? Sasson will be really revved up after Palchik's gold medal win. Now then, Sony Surikumigoshi. Oh, look at that! Kim, wow, he was nonchalant, wasn't he? Going out of the area there, and Sasson kept it going. Scores with the Kosoto, and he gets the Wazari. Well, the Sinagi starts it off. Kim wanted to stop, but uh, wasn't allowed to, and that, that actual technique started inside the area. Look how he chases him. He chases him. Tani Otoshi actually is the technique, and he takes him onto his side for a Wazari. Now then, can he hold on? He's held on so far. And the crowd are counting him down. Is it two gold medals for Israel? Yes, it is. What a way to finish this contest. This whole tournament has been magnificent. The crowd have been superb. And wow, talk about heroes. Every one of this national squad is a hero. And it couldn't have finished any better than that. A gold medal for Sasson. A second gold medal for Israel. Mrs. Miri Regev, Minister of Culture and Sports for Israel, was on hand to award Sasson with the final gold medal of the event. An amazing moment as the entire Shlomo Arena was upstanding in unity for the national anthem of Israel. So all the children look at me, look at Peter, look at Sagi, look at all the uh, best judo cars in Israel and I feel proud because I know how, how, how much they are inspired and they, they started to dream about their own dreams from this competition and it's a big, big um, um, privilege. 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 Big privilege, exactly. yes. big privilege. Every second, third kid in Israel doing judo, it's crazy. Yeah. The people here in the crowd knows judo and you can see there in their eyes they want to see a good show, they want to see a good fight and we, we gave, I think we gave them the best show. <laughs> we tried. We tried, yeah, yeah. What a start to the year. The Tel Aviv Grand Prix showcased judo at its best. But there's no respite for the superstars of the World Judo Tour. Soon it's time for the Paris Grand Slam, one of the most prestigious events on the calendar.